Hey guys, I've just set up an Ubuntu image here and I want to show you my little project called Suckless Graphs. So, here we go. I'm just going to uh, SG. Uh, just going to SSH into it. And um, I'm probably going to need some things like uh, Git, Make, uh, iNotify Tools, Nginx, um, anything else? can't think. I should make this a Docker image, but the way suckless graphs work is that it's sort of dependent on the SSH service. And running an SSH service in a Docker instance is a bit nasty. OK, so what else do I need now? I need, um, ba -ba -ba -do. I need, this is, this is the um, repo. Let's get clone it. Yep. And make installs it. And um, oh, let me run this in a Tmux instance. Tmux. Yep. Um, okay, SG. So what happens is that there's a server running. I usually just run it in a in a system D service file, but let's just run it here. So for the sake of things, making life easy, and then there's this SGC thing. Um, so how does SGC work? You go, you give it a value, like say you're recording uh, the temperature of something. Um, temperature is 30 degrees, and then you pump it to um, SGC and you, and you say what it is. Um, temperature, or you could, you know, it could be all sorts of things, it could be temp2 or something. So I'm just calling it temp. And then that value, is saved over here, and it's and the CSV file was actually a tab-separated value file, but anyway, and all it has is the epoch and the value. So if I did that again, thirty said so temperature thirty-two now, thirty-two, brilliant. Okay, now um, what else happens here is that we I have some plotters for you. And oh, let me think here. So this is where the stuff is kept, and then when you have this sort of shell script in there, what happens is this when when it notices a new value in there, like let's just create a new value, SGC. Okay, uh, say the temperature is twenty twenty nine, and we call the temp, didn't we? So yeah, when when it notices a new value, it calls a shell script, and the, script, the shell script basically conveniently just generates some HTML for you. And there's also a GNU plot one for you. Um, I'm just trying to show you what this looks like now by um, linking this into Nginx. Uh, da, da, da. Uh, uh, uh. Now I'm faced with a bit of a permissions issue, probably. And the way to get around that is just follow the readme at the bottom. Da, da, da. Okay, that should do the trick. Forgot the IP. So it's a little bit of a setup, but it's actually all quite simple, and I kind of want you to understand how it all works. So I gave it 32, um, what, 30, then 32, and then I gave it that value. And just so you can understand, um, what do you want to know? Just so that you understand, if I put a new value in here, let's say it's 50, the shell script is called, generates new HTML, refresh, and there we have 50 value is plotted. So it's all quite simple, and that's running on the server. Now, say I want to. Um, say I want to ha um, have have uh, some values collecting on, on my local machine, and then I and I copy it to that to that uh, machine. It's all quite simple. Uh, what you do is again um, say a value like say ten, pump it to SGC, say what it's called. Uh, let's call it Fubar, <coughs> and then destination is that. Um, should probably put root. 
Okay, so I just sent it some value from my from my host name, which is called X1C3, name of my laptop, and uh, I created that foobar, and there's the value. So as you can see, it's it's um, it's it's sending the data up, but crucially, I also have a cache right here. Problem here, yeah. Crucially, I have the data locally. So if I didn't have um, internet connection, I would still have a copy of that data. And and the way it works is that it, it syncs it up all the time and appends. So for every value I collect, I will not lose it. So that's quite important. So that's basically how it works. Um, and there's not much more to it. Uh, I have some examples of uh, some timers where you just collect stuff. But this I want you to understand that this doesn't lose any data um, because all the other, well, most of the other stat stuff I find it kind of loses data sometimes. Let's put a hundred here just to, for demo purposes. It's not perfect, um, but it just does the job how I want it. I want to compare that in my next video with Prom and see how that differs, okay? Until next time. Okay, guys, Prometheus is a pretty rad new tool to grab your statistics, but the way that it works, and this caught me out, so I'm making a video so that you don't get caught out, is that it's like by default, it said it scrapes every 10 seconds. So, so basically, it has this sort of pull model where it pulls the data from all these different uh, sort of defined targets, and it pulls by default every 10 seconds. Obviously, this is configurable. And you can see here that this gateway thing, which I'm testing out, it last grabbed it 2.8 seconds ago, and it's healthy, blah, blah, blah. So I was interested in Prometheus Gateway because you can curl up um, stats, pretty much like my Cyclist Graph thing worked. Um, and for example, I'm, I'm running this thing, and I'm, which has a which is curling up some some stuff to that um, to that that gateway, and what it's doing is um, getting a random number, and every five seconds, since it's sleeping five seconds, pushing that value up. So, what caught what caught me out very briefly um, was that since it's scraping by default only only every ten seconds it's only getting every second value. So it loses that sort of middle value, that the one that's happening every five seconds. And I asked the Prometheus developers what's up with that, because I don't want uh, data to be lost. And that's just the way it works. It just, you know, scrapes at that particular time. And if the, if the value has changed since then, it, it loses it. Um, so, um, yeah, let me show you what I mean. So, we had a, a 7 and a 9 and a 5. It's going to probably miss out, what, 7, 9, 5, 2. One of those values is going to be missing. 7, 5, and 9, and 2. 7, 5. I think the 9 is missing. 795. See, um, the 9 is missing. So, um, of course, you know, there's a, there's a spectrum of problems here, and uh, the way Prometheus works collects data, I mean, it doesn't need, it probably doesn't, for its use case, for monitoring things, it doesn't probably need <clears throat> to be as granular as what I w was hoping it would be. But at the same time, um, there needs to be a tool, and I'm using Suckless Graphs, my little uh, project, to make sure I don't lose anything. So, so Prometheus, I'm using um, for monitoring and such and so forth, but for use cases where I, I have to record something accurately, and there might be you know two or three values in a second, um, and uh, I, I use I use my Suckless Graphs tool. So I hope this helps you um, sort of 
uh, avoid the pitfall of Prometheus and maybe it makes you interested in my little project too. Thank you for watching.